Okay, so I think the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an EQ on the overheads. Now one thing I will always do with the overheads, pretty much always, is I will engage this little bugger right here, which is a high pass filter. Because there's really nothing in the low, low end that I need. Anything that does exist down here is gonna be mud. So I'm gonna roll this off. Until I can notice that it's rolled off. See here the low lows? You wouldn't think that overheads have a whole lot of low frequency information, but listen to that. Versus that. Okay, I don't want that. So I'm real keeping that rolled off. Uh, then I'm gonna use a shelf and I'm gonna make it gentle by rolling that sort of cue control. Shelves don't really have a cue, but they do have a slope, so. Uh, and I'm gonna cut it some. Again, I'm taking the body out because the body is gonna be from the close mics. Hear the thuddiness, the, the, the kind of punch frequencies. I don't want that. Let the close mics do that so these aren't gonna compete with it. Okay, and I'm still getting, I think I'm gonna be a little more aggressive still with removing some of the punch frequencies, which tend to be around 200, the low 200s. If you wanna check, you can always just roll up above. And there I'm taking out the presence, the mid range, and the low is still there. And as I roll back, you can hear that the punch is being taken away, which is pretty much what I want. Okay. Now you're starting to really hear the difference. Now what I could do, I mean, this is kind of a, this is some, except for the dip here, this is kind of a gradual curve. You could argue that, well, you can kind of go up and just sort of add boost a high shelf or whatever. Again, <clears throat> when you're doing that, you're not subtracting any uh, level by from your signal by by EQing it this way you're actually pulling out level which means uh, the overall signal is quieter it's hitting lower on the meter you can actually raise up your fader and get more fader resolution uh, because you know if you ever work faders down here the slightest little moves can be 5 and 10 dB whereas up here you know you're working in 3 dB 3 to 6 dB ranges uh, with the same amount of motion so I like to work my faders higher, and by using subtractive EQ, again, I'm buying myself the headroom to be able to do that by just removing the stuff that I don't want. Okay, so that's without, with. Let's see what that sounds like with the drums. Pretty good. Now, if it's a sparse mix, I'm kind of okay with that. If it's a fairly dense mix with lots of electric guitars and maybe some string pads and some things that are sort of filling up your mid-range a little bit, then those cymbals aren't bright enough to speak much. So what I'm actually gonna do, and this is not my favorite EQ to do this with, but I'm gonna boost that high a little bit. And I might mellow that out, that curve out, so it kind of is a more gradual, smooth lift. Now notice this is around 6K, and I'm actually gonna keep it kind of around here. A lot of people think, oh, I need a, whoops, whoa, stop that. People think, oh, I need a boost up here, and they do the, like these radical curves in the air frequencies. That's not where your presence of your cymbals are going to be. It's down here in the high mids. That's where you're gonna get the attack and the clarity of the cymbals, and it doesn't take a whole lot. In particular, this EQ is not my favorite. Um, I wouldn't really, in a normal situation, use this plug in to boost high frequencies as it's not one of the more pleasant ones there are other waves and uh mcdsp and actually the new uh system 5 the euphonics that comes with pro tools 10 is is wonderful but the george massenberg's great the, the sony is great but i'm just using this for the sake of um demonstration so i've got some of the air back in there put it back in with the kit And 
And I think I'm gonna actually add a little high mid. Uh, that's kind of a stupid, stupid little uh, amount there. Kind of find an area where it, and that's obviously a lot. I'm using a lot of boost to find the frequency, but I kind of like that lift right there. Changes the curve a little bit. So now the kick and snare are clear. They're up front, they're in your face. The cymbals are living where they should live, frequency wise. And I'm just gonna bypass the processing on these here so you can hear the difference. That's the straight unprocessed overheads with the And the compression pulls the snare out a little bit. I might speed up that attack even more, just to make sure. And then the overhead, you can really tell, excuse me, the EQ, you can really tell the EQ. And I think I could actually use a little less of it. So that kind of gets me going. So there you go. That's pretty good, decent balance overall. Good place to start, good place to stop this video. Thank you for watching and keep checking in. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.